Hi, this is Wesley Walker, former All-Pro wide receiver for the New York Jets. Stay tuned for Bridge to Health right here at MadhouseTV.com. Finally, the time has come. You no longer have to choose between conventional medicine and alternative medicine. Today, unlike years past, your team of doctors from all disciplines are working together side by side for the benefit of you, the patient, to help you regain your health and cross the bridge. Hi, this Hi again. Welcome back to The Bridge to Health. My name is Dr. Tom Dow. And um, if you've seen our show before, you know that each week we have a guest from a different healthcare discipline who works as part of our team of healthcare providers to give you, the patient, the best possible care that we can. Um, many different times the answer to a health problem is not just one answer, but sometimes multiple reasons for the symptoms you may have, in which case we might need multiple providers <clears throat> to consult with to, exp to try to give you the best care and the best possible outcome with your problem. For example, we may have a patient who's got low back pain. Um, that low back pain may be caused by a bone out of place, pinching a nerve, which is causing a disc to move out of place, um, such as a herniated disc. Um, so we have the chiropractic staff work on that patient. At the same time, we may have the physical therapy people work on the spasm and the inflammation. <clears throat> at the same time, we may ha have a massage therapist work on the spasm. And at the same time, we may even need a pain management person to come in and give some short-term pain relief to that patient until we're able to rehabilitate them and get them well. So today our guest is a licensed massage therapist. Uh, John, welcome to the show. Thank you, And Tom. it's a pleasure to have you here. Tell us a little bit about how you got into massage therapy. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. You're it's welcome. It's an honor and a privilege. I've always been in healthcare. I've always been in the business of helping people. So it started out with working with disabled children and disabled adults and then getting a certification as a nursing assistant. And I believe at that time, we had to do hands-on with the, with the patients of a nursing home, elderly care. And it was basically, sometimes it was some people would massage them to get them relaxed. I remember my first time feeding a patient. I was so nervous. I'm like, it's just feeding somebody. Just take of it as a child and think of it as an adult. And I realized that when you did tender love and care to someone like uh, a geriatric patient of a facility who's in your care, I was saying, wow, I really do have some kind of healing touch because they were a lot more calmer. That says more volume than speaking to uh, them. But of course, we verbally <coughs> talk to them. So I realized that I do have a gift with healing touch. People come to me and say, oh, I'm feeling uh, this kind of discomfort, feeling this aching, and I, just a few minutes of touch uh, and healing, and I said, wow, I feel a difference. Right. So we, I, I explain to my clinicians who come in all the time to train under me <clears throat> that school teaches you the mechanics of what right. to do, and that it's very, very difficult for me as a 32-year doctor in practice to be able to teach you what I feel as I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the gift of healing, which is much more than mechanics. Correct. It's mind-body connection. And many times, I'm sure, as I've heard, you've heard patients say, wow, I feel warmth when, I, when you put your hands on me. I feel, without even touching them yet, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of, I think that's the kind of gift you're talking about, right? Absolutely. Right. Yes. Right. So let me ask you a question. So you went to school. Where did you go to school? I went to the New York College <laughs> of Health Profession. Syosset right here in Long Island. It was a two-year program. Actually, rewind a year before that, I went to a uh, weekend course in North Carolina in Raleigh. I have family there, and I said, I want to figure, see how they do it there in North Carolina. And there is just a, it's just a short certification, 600 hours, less than a year to do. And we were able to talk about the, the techniques, and we were allowed to do hands-on technique right then and there, not even doing any other um, practicals. Just do the lecture, do the massage, and you got... 10 hours of certification, but I wanted more. I said that 600 is not enough for me, and I live in New York already, and I've been in healthcare, let me go to more. So I went to New York College, and I entered, and I graduated in 2010, and passed the boards, 
and been licensed ever since. Right, so that's important for people to know that <clears throat> a massage therapist working like yourself in our office, uh, that's a licensed profession. You have to pass a New York State license exam right. in order to be able to practice in the state. Yes. Different than like getting a massage in a nail salon. That's correct. We're licensed so, professionals in New York State <coughs> education. Right. right. So, and, and how long was the, that program at New York College? That was a two-year program. I did two years and two months because I did extra courses. And while I was there, I just wanted to say that they taught us the basics, Swedish and the Asian technique. But I wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn. So there was continuing educational courses, which is for people who are already licensed as part of their hours. So I did deep tissue, Hawaiian-style massage, hot stone, Reiki, right. myofascial release. We're going, to get in, we're going to get into every one of those techniques okay. that you have a specialty in. You're going to tell us a little bit about what each one is in a few minutes. Absolutely. <clears throat> but before we get there, what kind of, like, that two years, like, what, how, how was the coursework? What kind of courses would you study? We studied myo, myology. Study of muscles. Study of muscles, kinesiology, study of movement, right. pathology, study of disease and illness, neurology with the nerves. And it all started with anatomy physiology, the movement of the body, how the body works, parts of the body, the functions. So just like students in medical school or chiropractic school, you're taking courses in anatomy to learn about the names of all the bones, what they do, the muscles, the nerves, just like a regular anatomy course. It was a very medical Focused. Very hard, right? Intense, <laughs> Intense, yes. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and what, what else? And then you have your courses and your techniques and stuff, I assume, right? Yes, correct. <coughs> we uh, did reflexology. That was the first hands-on course I did, and I was working on the feet. And what I found fascinating about that is all you got to do is touch parts of the feet, and that helps different parts of the organs of the body. Right. And helps soothing relaxation. And then we went on to the modalities. Modalities meaning the, what kind of specific kind of massage. The Swedish is obviously European and that's very flow and relaxing and the Asian is what I call the dry massage. No oil needed and comfortable setting to uh, get into the uh, meridians. Right, right. So for those of you in the audience, um, this show is going to be just an interview. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the different techniques with John and what they do and the next part two of this show is he's actually going to be demonstrating some of these techniques on a patient to show you what it looks like and, and, and kind of explain what he's doing as he does it. Sound good? Excellent, yes. <clears throat> okay, so a lot of people think that they go for a massage and it's just, to, just alone, just so they can feel good. Tell us a little bit about what massage does, besides feeling good, to the physiology of your body, how it changes it. Well, <clears throat> to enhance the relaxation, meaning for circulation yeah. of blood circulation uh, um, in the muscles. So they say the issues in the tissue and because we hold some issues in the tissue. <coughs> so with soft tissue massage and muscle manipulation that gets all released and when you release all that all your organs get all relaxed as well. Blood flow increases blood flow especially in uh, pregnancy, pregnancy patients. Uh, they need that blood flow especially that fetus so that is another certification I, I, that therapists can do. Right. And <clears throat> it also aids in, in helping of the nervous system. You know, that there's the sympathetic and parasympathetic, the fight or flight is sympathetic. And um, it will help all that. It will help re in increase. Right, so besides feeling good, if somebody has circulatory problems, it may help their circulation a bit. Uh, if they have pain, it might help their pain symptoms. Um, if they have spasm, definitely it's going to help reduce, reduce the spasm. So there's actual physiological effects that occur within the body, which help the body work better. Uh, so it's more than just feeling better. There's things going on, which I've heard for sometimes hours after you get your massage, you're still getting the benefits of getting that massage. Is that true? That is true. Right. Cool. That's really cool. And that's the same thing we explain to patients when it comes to chiropractic care, is that <clears throat> you get your adjustment. We move the bone off the nerve. The nerve now starts to become less inflamed, starts to heal. And you might not get that true effect of that adjustment for sometimes two, three, four days, sometimes a week later after that nerve calms down and it starts to work better again. So it's more than just pop, I, 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 do I feel better or not? Or massage, do I feel better right away? Sometimes these effects take a while to come out. And what's nice about them is um, it's different than a medication which just treats for short term the pain 
as opposed to we are making actual changes in the body to make the body work better on its own, right? That's correct. Cool. Okay, now we're going to talk about all the great techniques and all the extra work you've done after school mm -hmm. <coughs> to specialize in different areas. And I tell you, when I read some of these, I, was, I didn't even know that massage therapists treat patients with these conditions, and there were courses for that. So I'm mm -hmm. pretty amazed myself. I think it's pretty cool. It is very cool. <laughs> Let's talk about the first thing. Let's talk about um, you working in my office. Okay, you're working for a for an orthopedic surgeon in my office, and you're working in the physical therapy department, and you're doing massage therapy. That massage therapy, I think we call that more medical massage slash sports massage. Correct? Yes, that's correct. Explain what that is. Medical massage is <coughs> treating a specific condition, uh, tension in the back, um, prior uh, after an accident, and anything that has to do with muscles being uh, tensed up. At, after any kind of injuries, and what I would do, medical, it would focus specifically on that, on that area. And then, of course, everything else is like the fringe benefit of the, of the massage, just full body relaxation. But with right. medical massage, it's targeting one specific area. Right, so if somebody comes in and they hurt their shoulder in a car accident, and the doctor scripts for physical therapy of the shoulder with massage, you're going to focus basically just on that shoulder, on that problem, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you talk about um, deep tissue, deep tissue massage, uh, outside of the medical field now. Somebody just comes in for a massage for overall wellness and therapeutic uh, um, benefit for their whole bodies. What's the difference between a deep tissue massage and I guess the opposite would be a not so deep tissue massage or, <laughs> or a light massage or? Yeah, yes, uh, they call it uh, a regular massage, relaxation massage. Deep tissue can be relaxation. However, there's more techniques. It's it, deep tissue that's slower. I can use even pads, my fingertips, knuckles, forearms. You can use all sorts of not just <coughs> your hands, but other parts of your extremities to help reduce tension that's built up. Sometimes they need that. They need that digging in, they say, into those knots, adhesions, uh, that's the medical term, but for knots. So someone coming in has, oh, I have all these knots due to my stress level, my job, or I do uh, physical stuff with sports. Well, I go in there and you find that deep, so I do some palpation, find it, target it, and sink into it, and then release it. Yeah, I, I love that. that that's, mm. that's, that's what I love the best. I, I always have a lot of knots. Mm. Um, which brings me up to kind of a comical or quizzical question that I have right I'm now, all for which is not on the questionnaire that I told you. I was going to make up some other things, too, that are going to come to my head. But um, I've seen movies, and, and patients actually tell me that they've gone for oriental massages, and the, the massage therapist, the woman, walks on their back, works on them with their feet, with their toes. I'm sure you've heard of that or seen that, right? Yes, I have. What do you think? Of that? Is that good for somebody? Is it not beneficial? What do you think? If the therapist has been trained in that technique and knows what they're doing, then it's beneficial. I've had it done before. And Even if they're 400 pounds? No, mm. get it. <laughs> I have a, I have a low tolerance for pain. Actually, I'm allergic to pain, so that kind, I wouldn't even know to say, uh, just bro, use your hands. But that technique actually is the Asian, is the Asian technique of a shiatsu. So think of shiatsu is uh, rubbing and getting into points that's an Asian that's a dry massage this would be a shiatsu using the feet now as long as you don't walk on your spine your vertebrae it's say, safe yeah because yeah, we were trained we don't work on the spine we're not orth us we're not people we're not surgery people we don't work on spine because that is a very tender spot you got right. the spinal cord and so many other nerves coming out so as long as they're not stepping on your spine, right. working around. Right. I, I've had patients come in that have told me they've been to massage therapists who are actually trying to push down on their spines, manipulate them. Take, they're taking their necks and they're, they're twisting them quickly and mm. popping both sides. And I, 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 want, I want to just make the public aware <clears throat> that if that's the kind of massage your massage therapist is giving you, if they're not a licensed doctor of chiropractic or licensed medical doctor, um, you're, you're probably in a lot of trouble and great danger from being injured because they really aren't trained to do that kind of work. Um, so if they are and you like them, ask them not to do that. Uh, it would be to your benefit and tell them just to stick to the muscles and stay away from the spine. 
Would you agree? I agree. It's called staying <coughs> within the scope of practice. Within the scope, right. I have a scope of practice. I need to stay within that and not go out of it. Right. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about hot stone massage. What is that? Oh, this is a fun, warm and fuzzy massage, I like to call it. It's like you're doing a Swedish slash deep tissue, but the stones, the lava stones are in your hands. And they're temperature regulated and use a lot of oil. And it's basically a nice flow to increase blood circulation to, to the muscles. Sometimes the muscle is so stiff because there's not enough blood flow going in. So with that heat at a slow pace level is going to rise the heat up to the body and it's going to help open up a lot, especially in the myof in this fascia, which is the lining of the muscles. It's a really good feel-good massage. I've had, yeah, I've had that. I, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you also are certified in craniosacral therapy, right? Yes. And you took this, the courses you took after <laughs> school and learned this technique. Explain to me what that technique is. I took it from someone actually in Saratoga <coughs> Springs. I took a trip because I want to experience something from someone experienced. And basically, it's a healing energy. It's light touch. What they taught us is the lightest touch like a dime. Like if you had a dime touching your body, that's how light the touch is. It goes, you go underneath the cranium, which is the back of the head, and <clears throat> you would do a gentle pull, and you're going to feel it down your sacrum. But you, you don't even have to do anything. I put my hands underneath the cranium and the sacrum and just... Um, underneath the, the client's back and the neck, and they feel a pulse. That's the cerebral spinal fluid. Once you feel that, you feel like, wow, you, you, you've opened up something. And they get lighter, they feel lighter, and I always got to tell the client to just breathe and let go. When they let go, when they don't move, and they just focus on the breath, they're going to feel the benefit of that. So that's what cranial sacral is. Right. Um, geriatric patients, older patients, you, 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 you specialize in that also, right? Yes, sir. Geriatric have. massage. How's that different from a regular massage? I mean, what, what are the things, you, I guess there's things you have to be um, aware of that you can't do and other things you can do. Explain what geriatric massage is. It's a very light, <coughs> relaxing, touching massage. Geriatric patients, as, as, as we've seen in, in the medical field, are frail as it is. The, you know, the bone arthritis, the um, muscles get weaker. And the osteoporosis. Bones, osteoporosis. And, and just mobility. So with, with this massage, it's from relaxation, it's being gentle on the skin because the skin is very thin, and <clears throat> increasing range of motion, especially people who are bedridden. I mean, I, I had a blessing when I went to a client's house in Shelter Island, and, and it, it was, she was like, I was like a hospice patient, and basically worked on just mobility so she could move a little bit better, I mean, incre improve the quality of life. You like working on those patients, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's quite yeah. fun. They're great people. Yeah. Obstetrical slash pregnancy massage. So massage is good for pregnant women? Absolutely is. And it benefits them, and I like to call them junior, the, uh, the fetus in the body, uh -huh. because all the circulation goes in into that fetus. And that is, um, that was something I took, took a weekend course to do, because we got to know what the <coughs> contraindications and indications of doing a pregnancy massage, and, sec and how to do it right in the first, second, and third trimester. So it's always, if they're two second and three months, two, three months, I mean, two uh, second trimester, third trimester, they're going to be on their side. Right. They're never going to be laying face down unless you have a special table for that. And it's increased circulation, general relaxation, and to decrease any swelling that might happen. Right. We take care of uh, a lot of pregnant women right up to the time that they're ready to deliver the baby. Even, I've even um, adjusted them um, in the hospital um, to get the birth process going a little bit faster, mm -hmm. to relieve muscle spasm, to relieve back pain. Um, and I would assume that what you do with massage probably um, just facilitates the normal process. And when a woman becomes pregnant, she puts on a lot of weight, especially near the end, uh, her whole spinal structure is totally changed because of all the weight that's out here. And now you've mm -hmm. got to help that woman with the low back muscles. And Correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Do you find most of them are in more pain in the earlier parts of their pregnancy or down near the end, the later parts? Down near the end. The current patient I'm treating at the office uh, who's pregnant is the, the, to always back stiffness, right. um, pelvic tilt, right. majorly because of the way the body is. The, the weight changes, and, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Oncology massage. You, you took a course specializing in massage for cancer patients. Tell yes. me about that. Well, that was done at, 
I like to say geographically where I did it. I did it in New Jersey because I just love to travel for this for, for what I do. And we basically learned how to do it for the spot client, but however, we could bring that into the um, cancer centers or hospitals. And it's a flowing, relaxing massage. Um, and being mindful that some people have a medical med port right here that's during um, chemotherapy. So they ha it, we, we treat it like you would treat like a pacemaker. You work around and not on it. And certain areas of the lymph, so we're moving lymph. And I, it, it could, could have been considered a lymphatic drainage massage, too, because of, of all the flow you're getting from the lymph. And for basically, well, same thing like geriatric, improve quality of life, increase circulation, and increase relaxation. Got it. What is reflexology? Reflexology is the ancient healing technique, by ancient meaning like centuries, of pressing on the foot. If you look at the foot as an entire body, the top of the toes of the head and the sole of the feet is like your lower back. So you would press certain parts of the uh, foot and or you do the certain techniques and you feel it in that organ. So you can actually have a, an effect, a beneficial effect on an organ <coughs> by pressing a point on the foot which is associated with that organ. That's correct. It's more than just a fluffy foot massage. Fluffy foot massages feel great but reflexology and reflexologists do focus on the uh, wellness of, of the entire body, not just that. Yeah, we recently, I had an acupuncturist on who uh, also does reflexology, acupuncture actually. So it's very, a lot of these points are very similar to what you're doing with reflexology, right? Very similar. <coughs> myofascial release, what is myofascial release? Well, if, you, if I break it down to the words, myo is the muscle, fascia is the lining uh, on top of the muscle, underneath the skin, and then release is just releasing all the connection of the myofascial. So it's basically just simply, it's a dry massage, I call it again, no oils used, just pressing down on that muscle, using your body weight, not just your hands, and it could take anywhere from five seconds to 15 seconds, and all of a sudden you just feel like you're sinking into the body. There's also pulling techniques as well that really it's good for the skin, also good for the fascia. Mm -hmm. What is effleurage? Effleurage is the relaxation where it's a slow flow massage. You're going from one insertion of one body part to another, one muscle to another. You could be just focusing on one muscle. So going to the insertion where it inserts to the origin where it originates. And that is very common with relaxation. I once had a massage, um, and they, I, I don't remember what the name of the technique was, but they actually, I was on my stomach, and they actually took my skin and they lifted it, and then they rolled mm -hmm. it. What is that? That's called petrissage. Petrissage. So I felt really good. Yes, it's like I used to work at a pizzeria. Sometimes help we we roll the dough. Yeah, so that's rolled, what it felt like. Yeah, exactly. So you're grabbing it, you're pulling it, and you're releasing it. And there's pick up petrissage. There's rubbing petrissage. It's really helpful, especially. I mean, I, I used to love it when they. I mean, they they would lift so hard. Sometimes they lift me off the table, mm. and and it hurt, but it felt good at the same time. And it just, I just, I totally felt relaxed after they did it. Um, and my back would be like really red after it, so I guess that's just the blood flow coming in there, right? Yeah, it's just the blood flow. It's nothing that's gonna be permanently scarring the back. Right. Reiki, what is Reiki? Reiki is another ancient healing art that's to do with light or little touch. So it's energy <coughs> transference. So I put my hands on somebody and we're just breathing. It's all it is. It's just breathing and focused on that person. The intention is to release anything, any stagnant energy. We all hold energy in our body. The, uh, the Asian theory is we all have chi, which is the uh, inner, ener inner energy, whether it's still or whether it's flowing. So good Reiki here and there will release all that. I do it once a month with a, pro with a professional Reiki person. And the feedback I get is you're feeling it here, you're feeling it there, and it's, it's helpful. I, I incorporate it into my massage. I've actually seen Reiki uh, masters and people work on people, and then they'll stop and they'll like, kind of like shake their hands out. Oh, What is that? I can accept. There, that is called letting go of their energy. <coughs> so, you know, a lot of people say, I want what you have. Well, sometimes I don't want what others have, it's not to mean like I'm better than them, but some of that energy you don't want to keep in your body. You want to just shoo it away. So what I would do is I'm working on something and go, shh, let it go. Bring it back out. Bring it in the outside. Bring it in the universe. Because holding on to it, and I've seen this a lot of people, they take so many people's energy, 
it starts getting to your head and it starts getting to your body and you don't want to feel that. You know, so all that clearing away. They're trying to get that, that, that bad stuff out of them, right? Exactly. And we all have... I don't mean bad stuff. I mean stuff they're trying to help take out of the person. Exactly. The take bad. out of it, not take it in. Right. So that is the main bread and butter of Reiki healing. Right. Do you have a website where, where people can contact you? I'm working on it. Okay. It's been a work right. in progress. But uh, Facebook page, Massage Heals. Um, that has been my uh, private professional practice for five years. Right. Traveled all over see people right so if anybody had any further questions to ask you they could just call our office ask for you and you can answer any other questions they have right absolutely I am available of service excellent well I want to thank you very much for being on our first show the second show is going to be much more exciting than the first show mm -hmm. um, even though this was like an awesomely exciting um, but the second show we're actually going to describe and, and John's going to demonstrate each one of the techniques we talked about so you can actually get a chance to see what they look like. Once again, for those of you watching us on Madhouse TV, stay tuned. We'll be right back. For those of you watching us on Cablevision, we'll see you next time. And remember one thing. If what you want is real wealth, join us next time on The Bridge to Health. If you're watching us on Madhouse TV, stand by. We'll be right back. If you're watching us on Cablevision, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Finally, the time has come. You no longer have to choose between conventional medicine and alternative medicine. Today, unlike years past, your team of doctors from all disciplines are working together side by side for the benefit of you, the patient, to help you regain your health and cross the bridge.
former All-Pro wide receiver for the New York Jets. Stay tuned for Bridge to Health right here at MadhouseTV.com. Finally, the time has come. You no longer have to choose between conventional medicine and alternative medicine. Today, unlike years past, your team of doctors from all disciplines are working together side by side for the benefit of you, the patient, to help you regain your health and cross the bridge. Hi, this is Wesley Wong. Hello there. Welcome back once again to the Bridge to Health. My name is Dr. Tom Dow. Um, and the last show that we had, we had John Basallo, massage therapist, um, as our guest. And as you know, each week we have a guest from a different health discipline who works as part of our team of health care providers to give you, the patient, the best possible care. Our offices in Melville, Hicksville, and Ronkonkoma 
um, all have different healthcare practitioners of different disciplines present so that you can receive the best care or combinations of care possible to give you the best chance to cross the bridge and, and attain um, better or, or excellent health. Um, on our last show, we, John, um, we, we described or we talked about many, many, many different massage therapy techniques, what, where they were indicated, what different conditions were treated, uh, different um, techniques which are of different benefits to different classes of patients. Um, today with John, welcome back, John. Thank you. Tim. <laughs> we are going to actually demonstrate some of those techniques so the audience can actually get to see what these things are. Um, so before we demonstrate each technique, um, I'm just going to ask you again a little bit about what it is and what, and, you know, how it's, what, what it's geared for and, and kind of explain as you go along what we're doing. Absolutely. All right. Abby, say hello, Abby. Hello. Abby is our patient today, my daughter. And uh, she's in the best position of all of us. So she's going to receive all the benefit of everything we're doing today. Right, Abby? <laughs> yes. All right, hmm. cool. All right, so, John, the first technique I'd like you to show us is just basically relaxation massage. You know, full body, relaxation, um, deep tissue, you know, that kind of thing. Can you show us that? Absolutely. All right, <coughs> good to go. All right, so as you can see, the client is in a comfortable position. I like to begin... First off, is centering myself, which doesn't take too long. Basically, just <coughs> checking my own body, make sure that my muscles are relaxed and my intentions are pure for the client. Without going too deep into it, I always like to begin by placing my hands well above the cranium, the cervical, or to uh, my friends in non-medical field, the back of the neck, to the lower part of the back, the lumbar area, and just take, tell the client to take a nice inhale. And exhale everything out. And you can so, suddenly feel them completely let go. So what I like to do is warm them from dry. Just do a nice compression. And notice this is something that a lot of massage therapists will benefit from for a long career in this, is to have proper body mechanics. So my knees are bent. My arms are straight. And I'm using my upper body pressure, not just my hands, to go up and down the body. As well as breathing myself. Remember, you got to practice what you preach. That's one of them. So then we focus on one bo body part at a time. We only drape one body part that we're working on, the back. So use oil or lotion. I like to start from the head of the table because I'm working my way down. Bending from my knees, elbows close to the body. Inhale and exhale. Effleurage. <coughs> This is sweet, basic Swedish technique. Wow, nope. I wish I was laying down there. <laughs> <laughs> and notice how the table is in a low position. I've seen so many therapists who bring up the table high, and this is what I'm seeing. Not healthy for the body. My shoulders are back and down. My torso is long. My knees are bent. My feet are to the ground. As I'm working towards the muscles, so this is to my medical friends, the back. But this is the trapezius area, the upper traps. So some upper trap techniques I like to do. This is pestrosage. This is picking up of the muscle. So you can grab a lot in that muscle right there. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's not going anywhere near the spine. He's off to the sides, not putting any direct pressure on the spine. I like to see that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we go to the other upper trapezius. So notice it's my whole body moving. I'm like kind of doing a dance. It may look silly to the others, but it's common proper body work techniques myself. And the client feels it. I think many clients have asked me, don't your hands hurt after this in a while? I tell them it's not my hands I'm using. I'm using my hands are 
just a steady tool while I use the upper body. So this little mountain right here is this uh, shoulder blade to my non-medical friend, but to anyone who doesn't know, it's the scapula. So what I like to do, because this muscle right here, the diamond-shaped muscle, it's a diamond-shaped muscle called the rhomboid. So it's in between the spine and the scapula. A lot of built-up tension and knots in here. So I take my hand, fingers connected, tuck it under the shoulder. Use karate chop hands, use the uh, side of my pinky, side of my palm, and just go slow strokes here. Notice how I raise the shoulder blade. And I get a little deeper here. This is nothing I created, by the way. This is coming from practitioners doctors and massage therapists who have shown me little techniques that they've used to help get into the muscle. So we're going to stay with this side of the body. Mid, middle traps, middle trapezius, so you got the upper, you got the middle, you got the lower. So if you look at it as a, we call it an upside down triangle going down the lower back. You always want to ask the client, how's the pressure feel? Abby, how's the pressure feel? It's good. Yeah. If you'd like more or less during the time, please let me know. And if they don't verbally let me know, I can always know from reading the body. Not reading like reading a book. Not like reading words on a book. This is listening to the body. How do you listen to the body? Very simple. You touch. Feel where it's tender. These are called signs. In, the, in medical terms, signs and symptoms. A sign, you can see. A symptom is something you feel. So the sign here, I feel, is a little built up muscle tension in the body. The symptom they might feel is, oh, that's where my stiffness is. How's that feel, Abby? Feels great. So, one long stroke to the lower back. Notice how I turn my body. I thank the feeling practices of yoga and tai chi in showing me proper techniques on body parts. So I learned from those techniques how to work around the body. That is the, a touch of how a relaxation massage feels. Can you, can you show us now a little bit about what, like, what a light touch massage would be? Light touch. So, fingertips wide open. <coughs> that would be like light strokes down the back. Yeah, just over the skin kind of, right? Exactly. So it's very superficial. Superficial meaning what's on the outside. Could you show us how you would, on a, on a deep tissue massage, um, use like other parts of your body, like the position like for your elbows and you know, things like that? That's great. I'm glad you mentioned that. That is one of my favorites to do. So a little more oil. Little, little oil to no oil is possible for this. So let's use the forearms. Press into it slowly into those traps. So what I like about here, you okay, Abby? Yes. I can get into her neck area, called the scalenes, as well as the traps. And that's not even using your hands, using your forearms there, right? Indeed, yes, correct. <coughs> and then what I've learned in the Hawaiian technique is to go up nice to the back. Oh, man, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm demonstrating a little yoga pose here called eagle, crossing my legs over and then moving with the body. So my body is moving with the massage. So instead of reaching over, I feel better. How's the pressure so far, Abby? It's good. good. Try not to ask that all the time. As a patient, sometimes the art of silence is the best healing technique, so. 
Yeah, he's at you. It actually looks like you're like dancing around her. To, yeah. you're, I've never seen a massage therapist do that before. Mm -hmm. They usually stay just in one position and use their hands. You're moving right around the table with this. That's pretty cool. Mm. Yes, I think the teachers that taught me Hawaiian Lomi Lomi massage. Keeps you in shape too, right? Oh, yeah. I get a workout <laughs> as well. Nice. And that is deep tissue. Can you show us what Reiki would look like? Reiki? Like I introduced before with the centering of the body. Little to no touch. The client breathes. Take a nice inhale. And exhale everything out. What I've experienced here is I feel vibration in my hands just by being here. I'm not doing a thing but just being present. The client on the table says, wow, I feel such warmth in your hands. That's the energy. And I felt a little twitch right here. I wish the whole world watching TV experience had felt a slight twitch here in Abby's lower back here. So something came out. And in the uh, <coughs> Reiki practice, I believe it's the chakras. And chakras are the imaginary lines down the body that have very focused <coughs> points. And <coughs> usually they have client facing up, but for the purposes here are now, the chakras start from here, the top of the head is one, the third eye, the heart, and I would stay a few seconds, maybe a minute, on each part, each chakra. I would also tell the client, the little talking I do, I'll tell them to vision the color of the chakra. And then Swish it all out. Feeling anything, Abby? Very relaxed. Very relaxed. Right? That is a good goal. Okay, yes, it's good John, can we have her go on to her back now? Abby, can you turn over, turn over onto your back? I want to demonstrate a couple other techniques, but I, I think we need you on your back for this. Yes, please. Good position. Excellent. Can you show us what your craniosacral therapy technique looks like? Absolutely. I'm going to pull this out. And explain again to the audience what it is and what you're doing. Cranial sacral is another energy healing like, massage, like a Reiki. So my hands are going to go underneath the cranium, the back of the neck. My palms are cupping the occipital area, the back of her head. While her eyes are closed, just take a nice inhale. And exhale everything out. And you basically, you're just here for a few minutes. You may do some light rocking of the head. And what they're going to do is they may feel stretch in the back neck. So there is some physical attributes to this as well as the mental, spiritual as well. Everything's connected. Indeed. And then what? One technique I like to do with this <coughs> as well, slip my hands, one hand underneath, <coughs> wiggle my way to the lower back. Same thing. Just breathing. In just a matter of seconds, I feel pulsating in my hands, my fingertips, from the neck to the lower back. That is cerebral spinal fluid going in motion. So it shows its existence, which is really cool. I just like the vision that someone is floating in the air. And they actually do get the floating. I'm not going to do any magic here and float Abby up in the table. She's not going to levitate, right? Yeah. <laughs> Probably feels like she is, though. Yes. Light as a feather. <clears throat> John, could you show us, like, if this patient uh, was in our facility and had a shoulder problem, would you, this, this be a position where you would massage and work on the shoulder? Absolutely. Can you show us how you would do that? Let's make believe she has a right shoulder problem. Let's say she just had rotator cuff surgery and she's recuperated back. 
Show us some of the moves you would do to that right shoulder in a medical, um, in a medical uh, area. Okay, so in that medical massage, we focus on that part that needs to be um, treated. <clears throat> I would cup underneath the shoulder, being mindful that there may be a, a, uh, some pain here, some puffiness. I'm always going to inspect and plus I'm always good before anything, I do a proper medical background. And my fingertips, I'm letting gravity work towards me. I'm letting the fingertips go into that shoulder leg or the back of that rhomboid, <coughs> the diamond chin muscle I was talking about. And I would just do a little rubbing in, in there. Many, many times after, not many times, most times after shoulder surgery, mm -hmm. the patient, because they haven't moved it for a while and while the shoulder's healing, will develop scar tissue and adhesions and restrictions within these muscles John's working on. And he's actually trying to release those scar tissues and the, those adhesions and try to get the motion back in the shoulder again. That actually, it's great you mentioned range of motion because sometimes with uh, rotated cuff injuries or something wrong with the shoulder, the arm hasn't been moved. They can't go anywhere above here. So I'm not going to force it on them, but I'm going to talk to the patient. I'm going to ask them to make sure that let me know when it comes too much. So can you, is this okay? And inch by inch, when I feel that they're pulling back a little resistance, I stop because then we're going into what they call the red zone. There's the green zone where you can stretch, the red zone is no good. So I take my thumb, I have to go around underneath the armpit into this muscle, a little supraspinatus, get in there, and the subscapularis. So it's just a nice inhale and exhale. Hold, release. Excellent. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like you to go down to the bottom of the table, and we're going to do some lower extremity uh, work. Um, and I, I, yeah, let's just yeah, let's get her undraped from like the waist, from the uh, just above the knee or whatever, so we can see the, the legs. Mm -hmm. Okay, lower extremity. All right, so. Let's just see how you would work on a, just a massage of, of one of the, 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 um, the thigh muscles. What kind okay. of techniques would you use on there? What I like to do, I also like to do a little track, a little stretch here. A couple uh -huh. underneath the ankles, and, inhale, <coughs> and then going to feel that in lower back. So if I want to work on a thigh, let's go on this side so people can actually see. Okay, always making sure that the draping is there. I like to move the body part. Some people like to move their body part for them. I just tell them, let me do this. This is what I do. And do some rocking. So that's just loosened up. If they're tightening up, do some rocking. And a little work on the upper thigh, and then smooth it out. I love that. That feels awesome. Wait, I'm not done yet. Don't uncover yet. Okay. <laughs> I want, I'd like you to show uh, just how you would do a little reflexology in her feet. Okay. Usually done barefoot. <clears throat> you can go barefoot. Go ahead. Take those socks off. Abby okay. won't mind. Will you, Abby? <laughs> a little more bolstering, feet be raised up. You do a little windshield wiper on the feet. A little of that traction uh, here in, in the ankle. And then it focus on one foot at a time and you do some pressing, nice pressing. The thumbs are bent. And once again, it's not just in my arms, it's in my upper body. Notice that her foot's getting a stretch as well as we're doing this. <coughs> Around the ankle. Let's do the other side. How's that feel, Abby? I, I got it. I got to get up and take a look at this. Hold on. Wow, I love this technique. And you know how the foot, see the foot is so relaxed? 
That means the whole body's relaxed. So that means the benefits massage are already showing. You know, the foot is relaxed. If it was so stiff, then I realize, okay, continue to breathe and let go. Stretch again. This feels good, especially for those high heel wearing people that are wearing high heels, walking in the streets of Manhattan. A nice stretch. And then grab the toes, top and make sure that there's no broken toes, no broken nails, toes, or anything. And then just do a nice lift and wow. pull up. You're growing, it still yeah. feels it in our back. Five, six, five, seven. Lines have grown in inches. <clears throat> wow, she looks relaxed. And this is something I learned in my Thai body work experience, which I love Thai body work. Pressing, gripping the heels, and rolling down. It feels good for the inner thighs, upper thighs. And then swooshing away. How you feel, Abby? Excellent. So that's the touch of reflexology. That can be either be done for a few minutes, a full hour. It's not just feet. Reflexology is also in the hands as well. So if you would envision the hand or the foot <coughs> with the top of the head here on the tips and work your way down to the bottom where the palm is, that's where the back would be. Excellent, excellent, excellent job. <coughs> I want you just to zoom in on this right here, if you can. This is a license, what a license looks like for a New York State massage therapist. Um, make sure that if you're receiving massage therapy, that one of these is posted in the room where you're having your massage, because this is, it's very important that the massage therapist who's working on you is licensed, is trained to make sure you get great care, but also to make sure you don't get injured or hurt. Um, you, I, 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 when I observed you, I observed that everything you done was gentle, everything you did, did was safe, you stayed away from the spine, there was no heavy pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very important that, that this takes place to get the maximum benefit. Absolutely. And there's so many places out there where, where people are being you know, worked on by unlicensed people. Um, and you can, I've had people actually come in that, that have been hurt. So um, just keep in mind that all of our facilities, we have licensed professionals with, with years or decades of experience um, to give you, the patient, the best possible care that, that, that we can afford you. Um, thank you once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Being on my show. I hope to have you again, back, again sometime back again. Absolutely. And... For those of you watching us for the first time, I hope you join us again. Uh, for those of you who have seen us before, um, make sure you come back and see us again. And if you have any questions, feel free to call us at any one of our offices. Um, once again, if what you're looking for is real wealth, join us next time on The Bridge to Health. Yeah. Seeing us on Madhouse TV, stand by. We'll be right back. If you're watching us on Cablevision, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Finally, the time has come. You no longer have to choose between conventional medicine and alternative medicine. Today, unlike years past, your team of doctors from all disciplines are working together side by side for the benefit of you, the patient, to help you regain your health and cross the bridge. If you watch it.